Hey guys, welcome to Functional Print Friday. If you like design and using 3D printing to solve real world problems and not just printing trinkets, this channel's for you. So what I've got on the workbench this week is two dial indicators. And one of these is imperial, this is inch, and one of these is metric. And this inch one is on the cheaper side. This is just a generic one, although I'm actually quite impressed with it. Um, and this is a Mitotoyo that is metric. And this guy also has uh, an accessory piece that goes along with it. And these guys were just rolling around in one of the drawers in my chest. And, um, you know, I'd hate it if one of these got damaged. It wouldn't be so bad to replace this one. Um, but this one's pricey enough. I'd be annoyed at myself if I got it all scratched up and it was tough to read or, God forbid, I bent this. Um, the, the shaft is quite precision here. Um, if you bend anything at all, uh, it's not going to move freely and you're not going to get an accurate measurement. So I didn't want to make a box for these necessarily, but I thought it'd be nice if I had just sort of a tray um, that maybe they would sit in in my box. So let me show you what I came up with. Okay, so here's what I came up with for this. And I designed this one very specifically for this dial indicator. I originally thought I'll make one for each, you know, just as kind of an exercise. Um, and everything about this is designed specifically for this style indicator, but apparently these guys are fairly standard. Um, the depth of this pocket here aligns with this, um, and it fits just large enough for the face and even has a small recess for uh, this adjustment right here. Now, um, again, I said I set out to make one of these for each of the dial indicators. Uh, after I tried it with this guy, I realized that this one sits in here pretty darn nice. Um, it's not quite as tight, the diameter, well, it's not quite as tight this way. The diameter is uh, slightly different. Um, we don't have this knockout here, but it's not really important. It still sits in there quite nicely. So I ended up actually just printing a second of the exact same design. And because of that, I think that this would probably be fairly universal. Um, I think probably at least three quarters of the dial indicator is out there um, would fit. And I say that based on the fact that this guy has a, is quite long. This one's on the shorter side. Um, and this face is considerably larger than this one, and these guys both still fit um, interchangeably in these cases very well. So let's go over to my toolbox and see how these fit now. So these guys originally sat in here, and I had a number of other things in the drawer as well. I cleaned it out quite a bit. Um, but even just by themselves here, um, as you open and close the drawer, they'll kind of roll around and knock into each other. So let's get these trays in here. And that is so much better. And actually, one second, ah, here we go, accessory piece. So I intentionally designed this that you had storage on both sides of the, uh, the dial indicator in these cases. And, you know, thinking about it even more, um, I think all it would take to change this design to work on just about any dial indicator out there, um, even if it has a really long shaft, uh, is just to pull this into your design program of choice and uh, just drag uh, this section out larger so that it's a bit longer. Um, but that said, let's go take a look at the design files for this and see if there's anything that I missed. Okay, so here's the design for this. And as you can see, we've got um, the main compartment, the recess for the mounting point on the back of the dial indicator. Um, we've got a cutout here for the, the one dial indicator that had a component, um, an adjustment or locking component over here on the side. Um, and then there are storage trays on either side of uh, this part of the, the shaft. And these do not go the full depth. You could go deeper with those. If I knock the side off here, you can see they're quite shallow. Uh, the reason that they are that depth is that is about as deep as I would want to take them to be able to still get in here with my thumb and forefinger uh, to get those accessories that I place in those, those areas out. Um, if you do need to modify this, uh, well, first I should mention, so the, the STL file for this will be linked down um, in the video description. It's actually located on my site, fpfdesigns.com. There's a link to that site. Um, and you could probably use this as is for, I'm going to say 90% of the dial indicators that are out there. I, I only own two, um, but all of the ones that I've used and seen are very similar in design. And I believe the attachment point on the rear is a standard size. So unless you've got one that's got a really unusually large face or, you know, a particularly long shaft in either the top or the bottom, it should fit. And if it is longer, it's not that difficult to modify. Um, in SketchUp, I could simply just select all of the drawing elements on this side. And if I wanted to add 15 millimeters, I just show it I want to drag in that direction, type in 15, and I'll get exactly 15 millimeters of additional length. Uh, guys, I hope this helped you out. Um, if you enjoyed this video, if you got something out of it, please consider hitting the subscribe button. Please consider hitting the like button. 
Um, it really helps the channel out. It shows me you guys are interested in these videos. Um, and I put up a new video every single Friday. Uh, so subscribe, check back. Uh, they're short, just cover a design that I've come up with that solves a problem around the house, around the shop, or outside for me.